Hello and welcome to the Powerful Personal Brand Podcast, where my guests and I share tips to help and inspire you to build a great personal brand to increase your visibility and authority. On today's episode, my guest and I talk about content marketing and the importance of content marketing. And we also talk about chat GPT and how it's really affecting the content marketing world and what you should know. I am your host, Claire Bond, and on today's episode, I am very excited to be joined by Matt Gerchow. Matt is an SEO-optimized content expert and the creator of several online tools, including Steady Content and Agency Hub. He has worked with over 200 agencies to grow their businesses through SEO-optimized content, and you know what, Matt? We've got a lot to talk about, and thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me, Claire. First of all, Talk about, I know how important content is, but a lot of people don't, right? It's it's sure. it's such a crazy process, right? Google has all these rules and, and SEO is difficult. And so what? why should someone create content? Well, content is how the world knows about you, right? And oftentimes I think people just assume that everyone's going to know who they are and what they're about and you know, a lot of times we think of content, we think of just written content or long form content, but content can be anything like an email. It can be a uh, blog post. It can be a video. It can be a short. It can be so many different things. It can be a PDF. It can be whatever else is out there. It's anything that somebody gets from you. You know, a, a billboard can be content. Right. So it's just a matter of having the right message for the right medium. Yeah, I, I, th I think it's really good points on that one. Um, I think that's one of the biggest things that people always just think it's content is is a, kind of a scary process. And, and, and people just say, oh, I, I just don't feel like worrying about it. But it is truly how people figure out what you're about. And you train Google um, about what you're about. That's yeah. what we always what we always explain it to our clients, um, because otherwise, you know, you're not going to show up in search results or anything like that. So content is really, really important. And so because of that, talk, let's talk about like why all content is not created equal and sure. why um, SEO content really is so important. So there's, you know, there's content like you shaving your dog, right? That's one piece of content. <laughs> and then there's like, what's your call to action, right? What are you trying to do with your content? Uh, you know, you, everyone listening to this probably has bills of some sort to pay and their mm -hmm. content, if they're generating content outside of sharing their family moments on Facebook, they're doing it with an intention. So I think it's important that you look at that intention all the way through from the very beginning of creating your outline of whatever you're trying to do all the way through to the final thing, which is, you know, the money hits your bank account and now you can actually spend something off of the content that you've created. So mm -hmm. I would say that that's where SEO content comes in the most is that, you know, you have to, uh, you, you really have to know your target audience. Um, you have to have a compelling brand message. Uh, you want to focus, uh, you know, when it comes to your personal brand websites, you want to focus on the user experience, right? When they get there, what's the first thing you want them to do? Okay, you want them to see your picture. That's the know, like, and trust. Then you want them to hear your message. That could be your, uh, you know, your, your tagline underneath your picture. It's similar on LinkedIn. Um, now what's next? Okay, you want to get them to a piece of content that explains what you're about, what your message is, what you're trying to do, and then take them somewhere, right? So you want to take them to the next website or to a YouTube video or to an opt-in form or to an email address, but you want to take them somewhere that's going to continue the journey. So that's yeah. why I would say SEO content is so much different. And I guess one thing to, to in case someone doesn't know exactly what SEO content is, yeah. can you explain that, like what, like specifically what it, it, what it is? Of course, of course. We all live in this world, so... Thank you for bringing that up because yeah. sometimes you just assume yeah, yeah. everyone knows, you know, what you know because you <laughs> you literally breathe it all day long. And mm -hmm. uh, SEO stands for search engine optimization. It's ranking in Google and uh, Facebook and in YouTube and Bing and all the search engines and TikTok and whatnot. It, it's just um, creating content that is designed to take you higher and basically beat out your competitors 
uh, for specific keywords. A keyword is something like, you know, plastic surgery, Melbourne, Florida, right? So you want to curtail your content so that it matches that if you're a surgeon, say in Melbourne, Florida, but you don't want to overdo it because then you get penalized by Google for uh, what's called keyword stuffing. And keyword stuffing is just using too many of the same keyword uh, either in too many articles on your blog or too many times within one article on your blog. Interesting. So I didn't, you can be penalized for too many articles of the same keyword on your blog. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. They want to see like, a variance. Yoast doesn't like that. <laughs> Yoast doesn't like that. Yoast is a great tool for kind of yeah. looking at your content and making sure that you're kind of crossing your T's and dotting your I's. Um, mm -hmm. It's a good place to start. Uh, Surfer SEO is another great tool uh, that will mm -hmm. look at all of the the currently ranking content within a particular keyword, and then it'll come back and say you need to use it this this keyword this many times, this keyword this many times. It should have this many paragraphs. It should have mm -hmm. uh, this many headings, this many images, and that's going to give you the best chance of ranking. Uh, for that particular yeah. keyword algorithmically, right? But right. what's interesting is I, I think things are moving definitely more and more towards video content. So okay. if you think about this, like if you want to rank in Google, you have to be the most complete article. Mm. If you want to rank in TikTok or in YouTube, oftentimes it's the most unique article or the most mm -hmm. unique content. Right. So mm -hmm. Google released something called the helpful content update. And that was really because they got their butt kicked by TikTok over the summer. They became the number one most visited site on the web. And it was largely because of video. Right. So if you're trying to teach your dog to shake, you know, teach my dog to shake, you're going to go on Google. The top 10 articles are going to be 5,000 words and they're going to have images and whatnot. But you got to, okay, you go on TikTok, teach my dog to shake every flick of the thumb, you're going to see somebody else with a different breed of dog teaching them to shake in a different way, right? And mm -hmm. that's hard, you know, that's hard to compete with. And that's, I believe, why we're seeing so much like with the YouTube shorts now. Mm -hmm. No, I, I know that YouTube shorts have, uh, especially for my channel, have been great, just like great yeah. organic reach and really kind of taking everything to another level. So if you're not using shorts, use shorts. <laughs> And shorts are the little videos, not the not the clothing. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes, basically the TikToks on YouTube. They're um, gonna they're gonna show up at your conference wearing shorts. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Claire, what I you wanted. told me. <laughs> I know. As long as they're not wearing like booty shorts, I guess I'm good, yeah. right? <laughs> the Daisy Dukes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. One of the, so I definitely, because we're talking about content and I'm glad you, you, you spoke about the importance of video. So one of the biggest things that I see a lot is a lot of stuff written about chat GPT and, you know, we're not talking about the sure. scary, like end of the world level <laughs> stuff that you also see about chat GPT, but about using it to create content, whether it's a blog, your social media posts and all that kind of stuff. To me, my initial thought is, well, if you're an actual thought leader, one, you don't need it because you need to be sharing your own thoughts in your own unique way. But also there's, you know, Google has rolled out ag algorithms to find this sort of content. I'm sure LinkedIn might be and all those other platforms can will be creating algorithms to find it. What are your thoughts? Do you think it has value? Um, and what are your thoughts like? you know, cautionary tales of why not to use it. Yeah. Being that my life is in the content business, I, I can talk forever about this subject. So, um, yeah. chat GPT, we've been using it for a while. We don't use it for our client content, uh, just because I don't feel that if you're going to charge the rates that we charge, that it's fair to use the GPT. Mm -hmm. And so what we had to do was we actually took a programmatic and technical approach to it and block them from copying and pasting into our uh, online editor uh, so that they couldn't just write it somewhere else and then bring it over. And then we set up all these timing algorithms to see if they were just typing, like brought it up on a second screen and then typed it in and whatnot. So we don't use it for our in-house stuff. I use it for a lot of marketing pieces to get ideas. I think it's mm -hmm. wonderful for that. Um, you know, you can say, uh, write me a marketing program about such and such, and it'll write it out. Write me a nine video write me a nine video outline for a marketing course. And they say, okay, now write me the script for each video. 
right? And it'll it'll do that. And it's pretty impressive. For the thought leadership and like kind of what makes you, you, like, so if it was for clairebond.com, you know, you, you can't be lazy on that one, right? That's the one where if you've got a tone of voice or sarcasm or humor or something, this is where you show it. Okay. But if you're writing for backlinks or something along those lines, eh, chat GPT is probably fine. The reason that we had to take a programmatic approach is with GPT-4, the existing online checkers cannot detect it. So mm -hmm. they, they all say it's human written. Even, even chat GPT's online detector says it's human written. So it's, yeah, so that's why we had to go with a programmatic approach to detecting. But it's probably just a matter of time though, right? I mean, they'll, they'll eventually catch up to it. It's just because it's so new. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to say. So Google came out with a post saying that it's okay to use. They also released mm -hmm. their own uh, chat GPT. It's called BARD, B-A-R-D. Okay. Okay. Uh, Amazon Alexa just released theirs about two weeks ago. Not Amazon Alexa, but Amazon just released theirs. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. And then Microsoft has something new called Jarvis, which uh, is kind of mm -hmm. interesting. So there was Jarvis, then they became Jasper. And I, I guess they just didn't have enough money to, uh, to fight Marvel on it. Um, but now you have Jarvis with Microsoft and that's going to be like the, the chat GPT to rule all the chat GPTs, mm. which is, yeah, you know, which is kind of what the meta crawlers and the Googles did of the past was they just ruled mm. all the, all the other search engines. So I think we're in kind of a state of flux right now. And the biggest thing that we have to, to wait for at this point is where are the search engines going with this? Right. So let's say that you're going to do a recipe for blueberry muffins. If you go on to Google, again, the most complete is going to be, OK, what is wheat? What are blueberries? Where do blueberries grow, et cetera? Well, if you ask chat GPT, you know, you see it like on Instagram stories, right? Like check out my blueberry muffin recipe. And they, they show it to you in 30 seconds, right? But if you ask mm -hmm. chat GPT, I need ingredients for blueberry muffins. It goes, bloop, and there you go. I didn't have to learn about the wheat and learn about the blueberries. And and, they all, and listen, nobody else wants to teach you about that or write about it either. They just have to do it in order to rank number one currently in Google. Yeah. So that's where we have to kind of, we have to see what's going to happen with this, right? Like what are the search engines going to do? Are they going to install the chat GPT right to that search bar and then give you the simplistic results? Well, we know with Google that goes against all of everything they stand for because how can they serve you ads? And then if they don't have everybody stumbling over themselves to rank, how are they going to keep people creating content, you know, for the Google world or whatever? So yeah. this is this is to yet to be determined and I don't I don't have the call on that. I wish I did. I would imagine that it's going to move towards being easier for people to get info. Well, I, I think, you know, it's definitely a disruptor, right? Because why Absolutely. would Google change if something didn't disrupt it and tell them, no, change, we want you to change. But I also think if you, based on what you were saying is that, you know, anyone that goes all in on ChatGPT is like, ChatGPT is going to create everything for me. I'm basically, you know, ChatGPT is is creating my brand. How robotic and weird, but whatever. I think there will be ramifications at some point because that's kind of my feeling is like, don't go all in. You can use it like, you Absolutely. know, dabble here, dabble there. But if you go all in, I can't, you know, because you mentioned, um, you know, keyword stuffing and keyword stuffing was, I mean, I've been doing this forever too, right? You would, you would put the keywords at the very at the bottom, bottom in white text. So no yeah. one saw it, right? You're yeah. like, and then eventually that was, yeah, they got rid of that. So I think you it's have been doing this a while. Things. <laughs> I know. But so, but do you agree? That's how I see it. Yeah. So let's say that, you know, where there used to be say 10 pages a day going up for a subject. And now there's 10,000 pages a day going up for a subject. At some point, the search engines have to say, okay, which ones do we value more? 
Which content do we value more? Now, if they can't tell which one's which, they kind of have to go by which one is written better, which one provides uh, the more LSI keywords. LSI stands for latent semantic indexing. And that just means like if you're talking about Ferraris, you need to talk about the Vroom, you need to talk about the engine, uh, color red, you know, supple leather, et cetera. It's, it's all the keywords that are going to be around it. And that's something that uh, I think that Chat GPT is doing as well, but it's it's going to be one of those things that they have to look for what the best content is. Um, but definitely uh, as to what you were saying, as far as the dabbling, do not do it on your personal brand website. I don't think that's going to be a good place to, to use it. Um, and then to speak one step further, it's interesting on Facebook, I see these guys running around touting, oh, I'm teaching everyone to use chat GPT. And th granted, there are some respectable people doing it, but a lot of the guys that I see doing it um, are the exact people that are going to get kind of weeded out by this technology. Uh, you know, they're, they're so? well, they're just kind of the, running at the low rung of things. And mm -hmm. so what they think now is like this excuse to be lazy, so to speak. It's never going to change, right? It'll always be this way. Yeah, they're they're gonna. Well, no, no, that's not what I mean. I mean the people that are running around promoting Chat GPT, uh, like their mini courses, and you know, I'm gonna okay, sell you okay. a bunch of prompts and whatnot. Um, mm -hmm. They're the exact same I've people that, that got weeded out by the last automation, and okay. the you know, so I just don't. They just look like kind of low information folks, and I don't know. It's just an impression that I get that they're that mm -hmm. they've switched from one thing to the next. And this is um, as soon as, you know, there's something called AIRP that has a lot of help. So now all of the, uh, the prompts are inside of a Google extension. And then there's a couple others where they actually store all of the chat GPT prompts that go up and you can scroll through them. You know, so just as an example, the people selling prompts, that will be a thing of the past probably in the next six months or so. It's it, yeah, it's weird. I've used ChatGPT and I didn't really find the need for a prompt. It was kind of pretty simple, but pretty simple. <laughs> like, yeah, you okay. just kind of you just kind of write what you're ask thinking. Ask a question. Yeah, yeah. kind of reminds me of the old school ask. Well, ask Jeeves. Do you remember ask that? Ask Jeeves. Yes, I do. Yeah, that's like way back. Um, and then Google took that over. Um, interesting. So I I definitely th I think we're on the same page. So if you I, I think ChatGPT is, is great. We've used it for kind of like um, ideas and some kind of things like that. But yeah, I, I personally worry, like you were saying about like a marketing course and outlining all of that kind of stuff. Again, if you don't, so that, that my feeling is that the people that are kind of faking it until they make it, they could go to chat GPT and they can be like, I'm an expert in X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Like I have someone, I have someone on our, you know, uh, that we work with who is a, uh, you know, is a, is a data scientist and she's absolutely amazing. Um, very high profile with the stuff that she works on. And if you think about it, okay, so chat GPT could give you some of the same answers, but they just wouldn't have her breadth of knowledge and, right. and use cases and things. So if you're really looking at some, so someone could teach you just the basics of it, you could do a Google search, or you could actually have a thought leader teach you real world applications or things like that. I feel Absolutely. like that's what the content would miss if, if you just relied only on chat GPT, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, absolutely. Like whatever makes you special is, you know, and, and it's kind of, it's kind of difficult because like, there's that whole theory on like, okay, do you give away your best stuff for free or do you charge the most money for that? Right. And so like, if you put the best stuff out there for free on the web and then chat GPT takes that and gives it to other people, you know, it's, it's not really fair so to speak. Right. Yeah. Um, but I think that you're, you're absolutely correct. I mean, chat GPT is not going to match the expert that has 20 years experience in something. They're going to regurgitate the information about it. Um, but people, you know, at least right now, there's a, there is a window where people are creating PowerPoints and turning those into courses and whatnot. But it's the, I think the people that'll capitalize on it the most is, is the person who has the 20 years experience and then uses it to create the PowerPoints. And then they curtail them to be a little more, 
uh, unique to their mindset. And then they publish that information. Well, I think that it's, it's really important. You know, I, I definitely, when everyone was like stuck at home in 2020 and, and everyone was like, there were so many personal branding people that kind of like came out of the woodwork. And there were so many people that were like, oh, now I'm a marketer because I could do that on my computer or now I'm this. And you're like, I literally saw a woman. I saw an ad. I don't remember where it came from, but I was like, I have to take your masterclass because this is crazy. She was a trapeze artist turned personal brander. You're like, you can't make that up. You can't. How could you even how could they even relate? I don't even understand. So uh, that kind of thing. And I don't even remember what this person's name was she no longer is on the radar as a competitor. And I think that is ultimately kind of what we're talking about is the chat GPT fakers are going to be weeded out because you can't, yeah, if you're going to go to them for expertise and you find out they don't have it or they got a search chat GPT and it's coming up with nothing, you know, nothing beyond a certain point, then yeah, they're going to weed themselves out. Well, you also see it like in the personal brand space, you see, you know, on the guy side, you see the the guy who's got, he's posing with girls, he's posing with cars, he's posing with jets and whatnot. And then you take his course and there's no substance there. You come out the other side and, and this is what's come to me. Like we work with other agencies and we help them get started and, and they come to us from other courses and they're like, yeah, it was great. I felt really good taking their course. Uh, the whole process seemed great, but no substance. They come out the other side and they don't know how to start an agency, right? Mm-hmm. Like I have a call with someone tomorrow that, you know, he'd spent 15 grand on a course and now he's coming to us because he doesn't know how to start an agency, right? So you just wonder, like, there's that that feel good that you can do through image, but what about the substance behind it? And are we yeah. actually getting to a result? I think results are a big you know, a lot of times people want to have just shelf help too, right? They want to, do you, have you what's, heard that term before? That? Yeah. So, no. so shelf help is really interesting. So you have like, we have three levels to agency hub, which are, um, we have the roll-up model where we buy agencies and then rebundle them for sale. We have our client revenue model, which is we work with agencies and sell them products for their clients. Um, but then we have an education and licensing side as well. Uh, what happens with a lot of industries is people are frustrated at their job. So they're looking for something to do on the side. Agency could be one. Real estate could be another. You know, the, your orthodontist doesn't want to drill, fill and bill anymore. So they are looking for things to do and they may think that, you know, the grass is greener, right? So they purchase a course for $2,000 thinking, uh, and I, I think a job is a better way to to relay this is like someone's working at a grocery store or working in a company and they just are upset with their boss one day. So they buy a big course and they crack it open. They look at it and they're like, wow, this is actually a lot of work too. But it becomes this silver bullet that they put on their shelf. That's why they call it shelf help. And then at any time, if that job gets too frustrating for them, they're going to pull that down and they're going to start down that path as well. It is interesting. There are a lot of people that will get a course, start the first few uh, modules or whatever, and just be like, they'll just burn out and stop. Yeah. Well, it's hard to say they burn out because they they yeah. didn't even do it. Maybe, right? Whatever. Yeah. Whatever but they, happens. Yeah, they move on to the next course. I remember one thing that mm-hmm. comes to mind is we were calling someone, we'd sold them uh, a product and we were calling him about it. This is many years ago. And he was, he was like, I can't talk right now. I'm on another webinar and they're about to get to the closing. Right. And so like he was just buying products, you know, for a thousand dollars at a whack and, and not applying themselves. And, and it's kind of interesting, you know, we have, you have your products, we have our products. And so we're pretty stuck on those. We're very committed, right? We're all in on those, but you know, it's sometimes when people are just buying stuff, they're not committed to it. Right. So Mm -hmm. to them buying something for a thousand dollars, if they can learn a trick or two in there and then they move on to the next thing and they buy that for a thousand dollars and, a lot of times people people will go into like, you know, personal financial trouble just buying these courses, trying to think that they're going to get something that's going to solve all their problems. Yeah. Yeah. I like a lot of things going through my mind right now going like, maybe you need some, some, some psychiatric help, but <laughs> I don't know. Maybe the course isn't going to solve your problem. Um, 
This I have has a, been a fun conversation about like, I, yeah, learned, I learned a lot of, of stuff that I didn't even know about chat GPT. A real simple rule. Just one more yeah. thing on courses. A real simple rule uh-huh. is always give yourself 24 hours to think about it. Like, cause they're yeah. all of the courses and webinars and whatnot are designed to get you to buy. And they, they build these yes ladders and it's very much psychology and moving you through uh, the process to get you to break out your credit card. And mm-hmm. like some of the people that I learned from, you know, they were full-time, st- full-time onstage hypnotists before they taught webinars. Right. And so like, I remember attending one of the courses out in California, I stopped in on our way back from Costa Rica and I was there and I was like, he was like, come by anytime. And I liked the guys. So I was like, ah, I went by, I figured we'll have drinks at lunch or something. I'm in there for like five minutes and I'm like, where's my wallet. And, and, oh. uh, and then I'm like there, I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to give these guys five grand. And then after about 20 minutes, I'm like, no, I'm going to give them 20 grand. And I was like, after about 30 minutes, I was like, I have to, I have to force my body to get up and walk out of this room or I'm going to give this guy my money. And so just, that's what I say. Just give it 24 hours. Let yourself come out of trance before you give someone 10 grand. Crazy. Crazy, crazy. Right? All right. Well, that's that's a great tip. I yeah, that's that's crazy. So I'm glad you didn't do that. <laughs> Sometimes you're just like, I need yeah, I, I like to think about it. and the thing that I actually I learned, um, my husband calls it calls it hot boxing, where you feel like you're just being hot boxed. And like if you feel like I want to when you're Sometimes you say, I need to think about it or I need to whatever. Um, A thing that used to make me angry was like, oh, well, if you can't afford it, that's like, and that Mm. used to kind of make me mad. Basically now, if someone does that, I'm like, oh, I know what we're doing. And now I instantly don't like you and I'm guaranteed not going to buy from you. And because you're doing that and that's just shady. I'll give you a real quick line for that. If you you find yourself in that or your listeners find yourself in that position, just say this, just say, Uh If I have to give you an answer right now, that answer is no. I like that. Right? It's just yeah. very simple. Yeah. Yeah. And if they, and you can't afford it. Uh, if the answer, if I have to give an answer right now, then the answer is no. Right? Mm-hmm. And and you can also say, like, I always take 24 hours to think about these things. I always check with my partner on these things, et cetera. Mm-hmm. But yeah, don't let yourself get pressured into something because behind any course is a ton of work. Right. Mm-hmm. Whatever you do, whether it's buying houses or launching a YouTube channel or, uh, you know, building an agency, et cetera. You know, we you get up early and go to bed late and you think about your business all, all the hours in between. And so do I. Right. And anybody yeah. who's going to be successful at any of those is at any any niche or whatever is going to do the same, because if you're not doing it, somebody else is. And now as the, you know, kind of as the world flattens out, you have a billion people from India and China and whatnot that want everything that we have as well and are willing to work 18 hours a day where we're willing to work 14 hours a day. Right. So Mm -hmm. there's just work behind anything that you choose. Yeah. Great, great lesson. Uh, yeah. This has been such a great conversation, Matt. I really appreciate it. I feel like there are so many t- like tips, tidbits, and learning about, um, you know, chat GPT and the importance of content. What are three tips that you can give people, I guess, if they're trying to build their thought leadership through content, what are three tips that you can give people? Uh, publish regularly, right? So you want to get, I put up two YouTube videos today. Uh, so you want to get stuff together and you want to have a system for getting it up. Use screen flow, uh, in order to put things together rapidly, uh, is, is one, um, personal, we're talking about for personal brand or what are we talking about mm-hmm. for, for content? Thought uh, leadership for personal brand. Yeah. Okay. Um, LinkedIn is really good for that. Uh, publish as often as you can on there. You know, you think about something, you've got a tip on something, Put it on LinkedIn because people will come back to you and they're like, uh, you know, everybody that you've been making contact with over the past six months, a year, et cetera, they see that post and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. He has that thing. Right. And then they'll they'll come back in. Um, And then I would say just make sure what you put up is stays on message. Right. So anything that's out there on the web about you, it's something I was thinking about before the call. I've actually taken videos down when they don't convey the message that I'm currently doing or they're for a previous brand that I was working on. Um, and or I don't like the way my hair was in that video or I was 
overweight in that video or something, you know, you just, you, it's okay to take content down as well, because you'd rather have a hundred percent of content that you have to be on brand than like, mm -hmm. you know, a few things that just like someone watches and they're like, oh yeah, screw this person. <laughs> yeah. Right? Cause it, the, the people will go down that rabbit hole, right? They'll kind of be like, oh, oh my gosh, start finding content. Yes. And I've, and I've had it happen before. And someone dug through my Facebook for something like three years prior. And I'm like, my Facebook is a very happy place. It's a lot of travel and a lot of good experiences, a lot of great restaurants. And I'm like, that must have really sucked for them to have to go through all that. Yeah. Well, I guess you can learn good or bad about somebody um, that way as well. So yeah. that's also a lesson to, to know. Well, Matt, if, if people want to connect with you, learn more about what you do, where can they do that? Um, so email matt at agencyhub.com. They can go to agencyhub.com or mattgerchow.com. That's G-E-R-C-H-O-W and Matt is with two Ts. Nice. And we'll definitely have that in the show notes and description box uh, if you're listening or watching. Um, matt, thank you again for being here. This is a great conversation. Likewise. Thanks for having me, Claire. Yeah. And thank you for listening and watching. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye.